I was, I, I, I came across a, uh, a quotation with regards to, you know, um, wisdom, and that is our, uh, is the, yeah, there you are, wisdom from above, that's my title for today. And the quotation goes like this, yesterday I was clever, so wanted to change the world. Uh, today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Now I don't know who is the author for this, uh, it doesn't uh, show up on, on the picture there, but does it does make sense. And hopefully, as I go through the message, hopefully it will make even more sense as we look at uh, the scripture that was read to us. But wisdom is something that the world values, right? Um, everybody likes to be thought of as wise. Everybody likes to be wise and to have wisdom. But many times... Uh, it is missed. I don't think people really uh, try to uh, work towards being wise. Right? We want to be considered wise, but never take the effort to become wise. Right? We gravitate towards being knowledgeable. Right? We have lots of knowledge. Oh my! And the world is full of knowledge today. Right? AI is. Uh, I mean, we have moved to the age of AI, artificial intelligence. But where is the wisdom? I wonder if there will be artificial wisdom. Right? Oh, what do you think, Mano? I'm not sure. <laughs> There's a lot of artificial intelligence. We all give a lot of importance to intelligence. What about wisdom? Will there be, you know, uh, a need for wisdom? I mean, the need for wisdom is seen, but will we all try to be wise. The Bible talks about wisdom and the Bible wants us to be wise, uh, not just knowledgeable. Now, that doesn't mean to say I am against knowledge. You know, knowledge is essential. You know, knowledge is uh, very much needed. But the question of wisdom is something that we need to discover today. And I want to ask the question, what does the Bible say about wisdom? All right. To begin with, the Bible identifies two kinds of wisdom. And one is earthly, spiritual, uh, or sorry, uh, earthly, unspiritual, demonic. That's what the scripture that we read said, right? And it describes the earthly, unspiritual, demonic wisdom. What does it do? What, how does it manifest itself? It manifests itself through bitterness, envy, selfish ambition, disorder, and every evil practice. Right? And isn't that so, so much of it we are seeing today? Right? So much of uh, disordered, disorderliness. Right? Um, what's the other kind of wisdom? That is the wisdom that comes from heaven, wisdom from above. That is what James is uh, documenting in his episode. How, how, do, how does that wisdom express itself? Well, pure, purity, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy. So different from the, the unearthly, unspiritual uh, wisdom. How else does it... Uh, manifest itself, there is good fruit. So different from what un, uh, the earthly one brings out. Impartial, sincere. And one more thought there, peacemakers. I'm just picking these up from that scripture. Peacemakers who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. Two kinds of wisdom is available. And unfortunately, we are seeing so much of the wrong kind of wisdom because this you know is the kind of wisdom 
the earthly and spiritual one which people want because they think that is the way to get ahead that is the way to be successful if you can fight if you can uh, you know be selfish grab for yourself as much as you can that is how the world is saying you are successful you get ahead you got to leave people behind i mean don't worry about others just get ahead by yourself that's the kind of wisdom that this world recognizes uh you know when we talk about the two kinds of wisdom that you see on the screen it actually symbolizes two systems that operate in the world two different kinds of systems that operate in the world all right let's have a look at that the two systems of the world and once again one system gives prominence to this earthly wisdom the other kind is from god and uh, we haven't done this in a long time i haven't spoken about prophecy and book of revelation but now i'm going to take you into the book of revelation for a little bit all right have you heard, have you seen have you heard of the babylon the great you th the two systems are uh symbolized by two cities one is babylon and the bible talks a lot about babylon that's one system when it refers to babylon it's talking about a system of operation of expression of lifestyles of wisdom the second or rather we we'll, let's just look at the first one what does it what else <laughs> the book of revelation calls babylon the great mother of prostitutes right there are so much you can unpack there i don't have the time but maybe some day we'll do that abominations of the earth this is the system that is the destructive kind that the screw tape letters was talking about right it's a it's a system that uh is filled with all kinds of abomin abominations what's the other city the other city is the new jerusalem we can't talk about the present jerusalem it's going through all kinds of <laughs> war now but the new jerusalem is another city right how is that city described how does it express itself it's also called holy city coming down out of heaven from god right uh, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband let's just contrast these two systems of the world from where we get the wisdoms that we i uh, want to talk about in revelation 17 i just uh, very basic briefly want to mention how does babylon this city this system how does it manifest itself there seven uh, revelation 17 verse 3 it says there i saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names remember this is the system of the world and had seven heads 10 horns symbolizing power leadership these are the systems of the world the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet purple and scarlet oh royalty this is the kind of uh, you know uh, success that people want glittering with gold precious stones pearls this is the kind of you know uh, 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 success that people want she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries but this system babel represented by babylon is filled with all kinds of evil wickedness manipulations selfishness greed that is the system of the world because they say that is how you must get ahead in the world that is the only way to be successful in this world just trample everybody get ahead don't worry about anybody right does it uh, remind you of uh, talking about two systems does it remind you of the two trees <laughs> of going back to the book of genesis 
One tree was forbidden. What was that tree? Good and evil. Good and evil. That's the system of the world today. Those who follow the, the, the wisdom of the world coming from Babylon the Great, this system from the two trees, believe in violence. Believe in getting ahead by hook or crook. That's the wisdom that is followed by this system represented by Babylon. I was just watching a documentary uh, just a few days back, I think. And uh, it was talking about the recent spurt in fascism. The recent, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, rise of fas fascist thinking that you just have to have dictatorships, don't care for democracy, don't care for people's thoughts, don't care for people's opinions, just dominate them. Dominator model, we talk about it in GCI, the different kind of leadership. That's the model that the people want. And how do you do it? Violence. Do you see the amount of violence going on in the world today? The amount of violence, because they believe that violence will get you ahead. Violence will make you dominate. Right? That is the system of Babylon, Babylon the Great. That's the system of 666. Does it uh, ring a bell? <laughs> 666, mark of the beast. What does that mean? 666, not 777. You know, 7 is the perfect number in, in the Bible. 666 shows they are always falling short of perfection. <laughs> and it is amplified three times. 666, always falling short, always falling short. That's the wisdom of the world. Right? It's the mark of human defiance. It's the, it's the mark of worshipping humans who become dictators. It is the mark of man-centered, not God-centered. It's the way of death. 666. Now you must be thinking, you know, how come uh, I thought it was mark of the beast was you know, going to be put on your forehead and on your hand. Uh, right? Uh, you know, once again, we don't have time to unpack all of that. But the you know what the mark of the beast is? It's a, it's this, a way of wisdom. It is actually wisdom. On your forehead, mark on your forehead. It's the wisdom that the world follows. Mark on the hand, you know. On, is it the right hand? I'm not sure. Uh, I mark, I think Revelation 13, I forgot to read it, but maybe we can read that. Um, hands, deeds, what you do, how you think and what you do is the system of the world. Mark of the beast, right? This is the wisdom that people believe will get you ahead and make you successful. but. New Jerusalem is a different system. That's the system of God. That's the, that's the, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me just read you from Revelation 21, just a portion. I saw the holy city, the New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things have passed away. No more violence. No more suffering. That's the wisdom of God. Talking about God dwelling with human beings. Showing God's commitment with us. Showing a sense of harmony. Showing a sense of peace relational togetherness and oneness no more exploitation no more violence tree of life again i'm contrasting tree of life and we are told 
eat of it and it's available now in in the book of revelation it talks about the tree of life being available for us to eat of it you know what the tree of life is communion who do we eat and drink jesus christ tree of life big you know all of this is symbolic and we are asked to participate and partake of the tree of life jesus christ our lord that gives us life all right so having discussed all of this uh, we have a choice to make wisdom from the world earthly you know sensual demonic that's the wisdom of the world but then there is wisdom from above right which is the wisdom that we want which is the wisdom the bible is saying uh that we need to partake of right let me read to you 1 corinthians chapter 1 and verse 23 beginning in verse 23 it says but we preach christ crucified a stumbling block to jews and foolishness to gentiles but to those whom god has called both jews and greeks christ the power of god and what the wisdom of god right christ is the personification of the wisdom of god that is why he came to the earth in the flesh so that he would reveal the wisdom of god when we look at christ we are seeing the wisdom of god and what and and what and who is christ savior peace you know peacemaker uh the prince of peace but what do you see on the other side war violence greed corruption grabbing armies weapons of war not with jesus the wisdom of god is entirely different and the first step toward true wisdom is what receiving christ baptism or oh, that's a symbolic symbolic way of showing that you receive christ but receiving christ is how we are then tapped into the wisdom from above Wel welcoming jesus is welcoming life dr greg williams in the video welcoming jesus is welcoming life believing in christ and doing what christ says is the mark of jesus christ as opposed to the mark of the beast what's the mark of the beast the wisdom of the world violence corruption manipulation and all those abominable things that's the mark of the beast the mark of jesus christ is peace harmony relational joy you know compassion kindness gentleness which is the mark we have what kind of a mark do people see in us the mark of the beast or the mark of jesus christ our lord the two wisdoms being uh contrasted right when you talk about the mark of the beast you know people go all wild speculations oh will we have 666 written on our forehead no it is simply your yours and my lifestyle we are either sold to the mark of the beast we want the wisdom of the world or it is the mark of jesus christ the wisdom of christ who is jesus christ personified what about a church what about our church we are talking about healthy church how do we be healthy church when we are tapped into the wisdom of jesus christ when we have the mark of jesus christ we then are a healthy church what is the expressions of our church just yesterday in our in our prayer discussions we were talking about a healthy church and look at some of the churches what is the expressions division corruption sexual abuse do you know how many churches now are indicted for sexual abuse what mark is that that's not the mark of jesus christ churches filled with court cases people robbing money clergy involved in corruption leadership involved in all kinds of politicizing and politics 
That's the wisdom of the world. That's not the mark of Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? Having said all that, application. How does it apply to us? Wisdom of the world, wisdom of wisdom from above. Right? Um, here is the application. Who is wise and understanding among you? You want wisdom? Here it is. Let them show it by their good life. By deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. This is the wisdom from God. Right? Uh, want us to, we, want, we want to be wise? Here it is. Notice it first says, let them show it by their, uh, show it by their good life. Deeds. Wisdom is not measured by academic degrees or the amount of knowledge you have, but by the deeds that are seen in each one of us. What kind of, once again we go to expressions, what kind of deeds are being shown in our lives? It's the application of knowledge, don't get me wrong, I'm not against knowledge, but it's the application of knowledge. It is the participation that we have with the knowledge that is in us. If we have knowledge and no participation, no expression, it's of no value. It has no value. We are to show the presence of wisdom by good deeds, practiced with humility. Humility is constantly being mentioned, right? Uh, the truly wise person is humble, never boastful. Boastfulness is wisdom of the world. Humility is wisdom of that comes from above, right? So only obedient deeds, not mere talk, proves the presence of wisdom. So if you and I are considered wise, don't look at the degrees behind your name, but look at your actions, your expressions. Does it have the mark of Jesus Christ? Or does it have the mark of you know who? Right? Now, when we say deeds, what kind of deeds are we talking about? Godly wisdom is peaceable or peace loving. How much do you and I love peace? It shows, it will show how much we pursue it. Is there any lack of peace anywhere in the family, in the church, among friendships, among relatives? Is there any attempt to bring and pursue peace? That's what Jesus says, pursue peace. The Apostle Paul said, pursue peace. Putting a high value on easing conflict. That is wisdom from above. What else is the wisdom of God? The deeds that we are talking about. Gentle, considerate. Not ready to fight, but ready to serve. Where do you have opportunity to serve? That's the wisdom from above. Right? Not sh shirking away our responsibility to serve. Reasonable, submissive, ready, ready to see things from another point of view or do it someone else's way. We just mentioned teamwork. How does a teamwork work? How does a team work well, perfectly, correctly, by being reasonable, by being submissive to one another, by being ready to see things from the other person's perspective, not just putting forward your perspective. What about the other person's perspective? How does, how does, will, how will the team work otherwise? Teamwork, very important for healthy church. So, Leadership team, NMT, national ministry team, how are we working? Is there reasonableness? Are you willing to reason with others? Are you willing to submit to the others? Are you willing to see things from the other person's perspective? All of this is the mark of Jesus Christ, the wisdom that comes from above. True wisdom is full of mercy is impartial. We discussed impartiality the other day when I spoke. 
not showing favoritism sincere with no need to fake anything to get what what it uh, wants out of other people so question brethren is we have seen deeds wisdom is seen by deeds is expressed by deeds what kind of weeds we just went through it and so we have to ask the question which wisdom is guiding us heavenly wisdom or the wisdom of the world heavenly uh, wisdom that comes from jesus christ or comes from the beast what kind of a mark do we have the way we think 666 on your forehead the way we think and 666 on your hand the deeds the way you think is the deeds that we have the way you think is the expressions that we see your expressions show how you think and your deeds and your ex expressions and your way you think shows which wisdom we are following wisdom of the world or wisdom from above right i mentioned all of these things the wisdom of god right pure peace loving considered submissive full of mercy good fruit impartial sincere peacemakers who sow in peace reaping a harvest of righteousness yesterday i was clever right so i wanted to change the world today i am wise so i am changing myself uh wisdom from above remember we are all being influenced in our thinking and our doing something is constantly influencing us every decision you make is being influenced by something right it could be your religion your culture your non belief your world view what what is the world view we have and the question we have to ask is every thought pattern and every deed reveals whether we have the wisdom from above or wisdom from the world mark of the beast or mark of jesus christ our lord going back to the saying today i am wise so i'm changing myself very important it's only when we change ourselves can we have the strength to change the world don't switch it when we have christ in us we can change ourselves and christ is changing the world then we can participate with christ in changing the world right so changing the world is necessary but we cannot do it without changing ourselves and so brethren may god grant us the wisdom to change ourselves through the wisdom that comes from above so that we can join jesus christ to change the world